السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخواني في الله We are continuing with our lecture series regarding the history of the Muslims in Italy or more specifically the history of the Muslims in Sicily إخواني في الله the Muslims were there in Sicily from the year 212 of the Hijri calendar to the year 484 of the Hijri calendar. They were the rulers. And thereafter, they remained for another period, almost 400 to 500 years, Muslims were in Sicily. But these Muslims are no longer in Sicily. The history was wiped off the face of the earth, that we know nothing about these Muslims of Sicily. When you look at history, you look at the Christians of Egypt, they were there before Islam came. And when Islam came, they remained in Egypt. You look at Syria, you look at Iraq, you look at Palestine, you find Christians, generations and generations. They were there before Islam and the Muslims, and they're still there. The Jews, the same. They were there in Yemen, they were there in Iran, they were there in Tunisia and Morocco. Non-Muslims have been living in our society even before us, and they remained. Even you go to Iraq, you find other People who are not Muslims at all, the Yazidis, for example, or the Magians, the worshippers of the fire, they were there. So Islam did not come to force anyone upon its faith. La ikraha fi din. We do not face, force anyone to follow our faith. But the question comes, what happened to 300 years of history or 400 years of history of Muslims in Sicily? Where are those Muslims of Sicily? Can you go around now to Italy and look for a Muslim who traces his lineage back to those days? What happened to the Muslims of Spain, of Andalus, of Portugal that are there for 800 years? What happened to the Muslims of southern France? Are you together? All these Muslims were massacred or expelled or taken into slavery. Opposite of the actions of the Muslims. Compare these two and you shall know the truth. We are the most tolerant faith. We are the ones who are moderate. The rest are not. They're not the same as us. So, the year 212 of the Hijri calendar is the event we're talking about. In the year 212, the Muslims in Tunisia, that is known as Afriqiya at the time, has been led by a man called Ziyadatullah ibn Ibrahim al aghlab They have a debate, the scholars of uh, Tunisia in Qairawan at that time. They find that a person, the head of the naval fleet or the head of the island fleet of Sicily has come to, to Tunisia to seek the help of the Muslims. He wants the Muslims to go assist this man Euphemius to take over Sicily. So the scholars, they sit. They have a scholar called Asad ibn al-Furat ibn al-Sinan. You have a scholar called Abu al-Mihraz al-Kinani. And you have a scholar called Sihnun. So these scholars are debating, should we go conquer uh, Sicily. Majority of the scholars are against this. Why? Because the Muslims have an agreement with Byzantine in Constantinople that they shall have a peace period of 10 years. But Euphemius insists you Muslims are the only ones who are following this uh, agreement because in Sicily there are very many Muslim prisoners. So in Asad ibn Furat, the chief Qadi, he hears this, he says, we have to declare jihad, we have to declare war on these people, we have to take Islam to this island and we have to conquer it. That's number one. Number two, these people always are a threat to the islands, to the, to the cities on the, on the coasts, the city of Tripoli in, uh, in uh, Libya. There's two Tripolis for benefit. There's a Tripoli in uh, Libya and a Tripoli in which other country? Let's know who knows his geography. There are two Tripolis in the Islamic world. Tripoli in Libya and another Tripoli in... Huh, who knows? There are two, two, two Tripolis. One in Libya and the other one in, in Lebanon, correct. So every time they're attacking the coastal areas, how do we take care? So Asad Mufrat is insisting that we have to take over Sicily. So the leader Ziyadatullah ibn Ibrahim al-Aghlab he says, I agree with Asad ibn Furat, let us go conquer Sicily. This is the event of the year 212 of the Hijri calendar. And he says to Asad ibn Furat, you are our faqih, you are our scholar, you have studied all this ilm, you be the leader of the army. 
is this a correct decision? You take the good scholar, you put him in the head of the army. Is that correct? Or is that not correct? He's an alim, he's a scholar, he knows the Quran, he has a sunnah. Should be the head of society and everything, including the army. Ha, huh? what do you guys think? Is that the correct move? No? Not correct. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to send armies. For example, he has, you have a person called Amr ibn As. He became a Muslim very late. He and Khalid bin Walid. So Amr ibn As is given the head of a battle. It's called Dhatu Salasil. It says, you go conquer that area of uh, the Arabian Peninsula. And in your army, you will be having Abu Ubaidah and Umar. Who is better between Amr ibn As and Abu Ubaidah and Umar? Who are the ten promised Jannah? Two of the ten promised Jannah. But the head is Amr ibn As. You're a sheikh, you're a scholar, that is a, a speciality. But this is war, this is a speciality. The doctors I can see in the, hospital, in the mosque, that is a speciality. Give everyone their own speciality. There's no offense to the scholars, it's true or false. Fighting is a speciality. The rules of war or the engagements that you need to, the tactics, that is a speciality. It's not the scholars, is that a speciality for us as students of knowledge as scholars? Huh? Or we have been disrespectful to the scholars. Keep everyone in the speciality they're in. If you're a cook, you're a cook. If you're a doctor, you're a doctor. If you're a carpenter, you're a carpenter. You don't say, oh, Sheikh, you're the, you're the imam. Go make for us a table. You're the imam. You do for us. No, there's, everyone has his own uh, expertise. So he was made the leader. Asad ibn Furat ibn Sinan, the year to 12 of the Hijri calendar. So an army of 10,000 Muslims, Arabs, Barbers, they cross from Tunisia into, into Sicily, a distance of about 160 kilometers. They have over 100 ships, 10,000 uh, army, of which 1,000 uh, is cavalry, the 9,000 is infantry. So they cross into Sicily, and they manage to conquer the eastern province, or the western province of Sicily, that's known as Mazara, that is the year 212 of the Jirkanda. Then Asad al-Furat, rahimahullah, he has this passion, he has this hamasa, he has this religious vigor. He says, let us not waste time with these other towns that are near us. Let us go for the capital city. The capital city is all the way in the east. This island, Khanifillah, Sicily, is the biggest island in the Mediterranean. The largest island in the Mediterranean is Sicily. It is the gateway to Europe. It is the gateway to the Byzantines. It is the most fertile land that you can find in that area of the world. This is where the food for most of the Roman Empire that was coming from this place, from Sicily and from Egypt. So conquering Sicily is something that will give you a lot of wealth in terms of a fertile land and such. So he says, I've conquered Mazara. Let us go all the way to Syracuse. Syracuse is in the, is in the east of Sicily. So he goes with his army, a small army, 10,000, maybe a few have died. He reaches Syracuse. Syracuse, before he reaches it, the elders or the leaders of Syracuse, they come to him. They say, we'll give you jizya. We'll pay the tax that non-Muslims are supposed to pay. Hatta yu'tul jizya ta'ayyadin wa hum saagirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the non-Muslims three, three conditions or three choices. Choice number one, accept Islam. You're not forced. You don't want Islam, no problem. Number two, you do not fight us. You pay a jizya. The Muslims will pay zakah, you guys pay jizya. Option number three, you have refused Islam. You have refused not to fight us and pay jizya. Option number three, we have no choice, we have to fight. Those are the three options that the Islam, the deen of Islam has, has come with. So these people, they come, they say, we will not accept Islam, but we will accept not to fight you and we will pay the jizya. So, of course, Asad bin Furat, rahimahullah, is glad with this. So he goes and reaches Syracuse. When he reaches Syracuse, he discovers that these people were being deceptive. They were lying so that they could buy more time to build up their defenses. And that is what they did. And this is one of the things that you have to know as a sheikh. You cannot trust people. This is something the people in the armies or the generals, they know. In war, al-harbu khida, the war is deception. You can tell people, ah, tomorrow I'm going to attack east. Then you go with the army, south or north. But maybe a sheikh will be like, ah, that is haram or... But in war, there's deception. You're allowed to lie in three situations. Amongst them is that one of war. The other two, you'll tell me later. Now, so he comes and he finds Syracuse is well defended. And he besieges his Khanifillah. This is a blunder. He besieges one of the most fortified cities in the entire world. 
Syracuse was the second capital city of the Byzantines. The Byzantines, sometimes they leave Constantinople, that was the most fortified city in the entire world, and they come to Syracuse. So Syracuse was as fortified as the city of Constantinople that is currently known as Istanbul. So he besieges it for one year, Rahimahullah, Asad ibn Lifrat. No food. An army is as good as the food. If you have an army, you have to have a line where you're getting your supplies, your logistics, you have, uh, in case you fall into trouble, you have uh, support from that. So there's no food, there's no drink. So most of the army of starts perishing because of lack of food. They stick the 1,000 or 2,000 horses they have and they start eating it. So they have no horses after a while. Then after a while, disease spreads in the camp and people start dying, and amongst the people who passed away is this imam, this great scholar, the one who started the conquest of uh, Sicily, the imam Asad ibn Furat ibn Sinan, rahimahullah, he passed away in the year 213 of the Hijri calendar. Thereafter, the leader of the Muslims is another man called Muhammad ibn Abil Jawari. He takes leadership of the Muslim army. He decides that continuing to besiege Syracuse is a blunder. We cannot conquer this city, we don't have even the ways of bombardment, we don't have the, the catapults, we don't have the missiles we can throw, we don't have those things that are required to break into fortified towers. We don't have the equipment, we have not come with those equipment. We can't take this city. So he decides, let us go back to Tunisia and we seek more help, we reorganize ourselves, then we come back again. As he's leaving Khanifillah, he is, finds himself that the entire island has been surrounded or besieged by the Byzantines and by Venice. We mentioned Italy, Khanifillah, is a lot of different provinces. Italy has uh, Sicily, Sardinia, Rome, Venice, Naples, and so other provinces. So Venice is one of the provinces that have a powerful navy. So they have joined the Byzantines, and now they are besieging the island of Sicily. So he tries to escape uh, Abu, uh, Muhammad ibn Abil Jawari. He cannot escape. So he comes back to Mazara and he burns all the ships that he has. Why did he burn all the ships that he, have? he has? Huh. You see, there are no people of military grade over here. <laughs> so none of you can lead our armies. Why does he burn the ships? So that it cannot be used by them. It cannot be taken by the enemy for their own harm. Are you getting? So sometimes a war tactic is you, you remove that which might harm you later on. You remove that which might harm you later on. You live like a fortress. You have been surrounded. You have been besieged. Hungers. You have to surrender this place. Surrender it, no problem, but make it unlivable. Make it unlivable. Poison the wells, for example. Uh, cut, uh, destroy the, the agriculture or something. Destroy the sources of electricity in our time. So so that you, you leave the place, it's not habitable for the army that will come to take it over. So he burns the ships and he goes and he stays in Mazar. The Muslims of are besieged there for years. People come from Andalus to try to assist them, they're not able, until finally they get some help again from Tunisia and they're able to start victory again. In the year 216 of the Hijri calendar of they took over a place called Pal Pal Palarmo. Palermo, I don't know if you've heard of Palermo. Italy is a very difficult language. So they took over Palermo, and this became the capital city of Sicily. From that date on till today, the capital city of Palermo is, the capital city of Sicily is Palermo, and the people who made it the capital city are the, are the Muslims, from the year 216 of the Hijri calendar. But the Muslims, they continued trying conquering this land of Sicily. Slowly by slowly, they took 75 years to conquer the entire of Sicily. 75 years. Probably there's no conquest that has taken that length of time. Andalus is 600,000 square kilometers. Sicily is only 25,000 square kilometers. Sicily is one over 30 or one over 20, one over 25 the size of Andalus. But it took how many years more? 73 years more. So there's something the Muslims did correct in Andalus that they did wrong in, in Sicily. Why it takes 75 years for a piece of land that's 25,000 square kilometers and you take only two years to conquer a land that is 600,000 square kilometers? The first mistake, 
that the Muslims made, we mentioned in the previous quest, uh, lecture, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in Surah Al-Hujurat the character that is required of a Muslim. From amongst the character that is required uh, for a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in ja'akum fasiqun binaba'in, fatabayyanu. Or oh, you have believed, if someone brings you news, you have to confirm the news. You have to do what? You confirm the news. You cannot send an entire army based on the news of this Christian euphemius. That is a mistake. Are you together? The Muslims, when they are conquering Andalus, for example, they did not send Tariq ibn Ziyad and Musa ibn Nusayr immediately. No. The first person who was sent in the year 91 of the Hijri calendar was Tarif ibn Malik. Tarif ibn Malik goes with an army of maybe 1,000, 2,000 people. He enters the island of uh, Tarif that is known up to today as the island of Tarif. He enters, he studies the situation in Andalus as a spy, as a scout. You have to send a scouting mission first. You have to send a reconnaissance mission. You have to send your spies first before you come to fight. The second mistake, Khanifillah, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِمَّا تَخَافَنَّ مِنْ قَوْمٍ خِيَانَةً فَانْبِذْ إِلَيْهِمْ عَلَى سَوَىٰ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْخَائِنِينَ As Muslims, regardless of the opportunity we see before us, as long as we have an agreement with the non-Muslims, you never break it. You never do it. You never break it. For example, you see, ha, this is the, we have, for example, just hypothetical, we have a peace agreement with, uh, with Israel, for example or with Myanmar, with the junta in uh, Myanmar, then you see an opportunity, ha, I can take this opportunity and defeat the junta. But you have a peace agreement with the junta. What do you do as a Muslim? Are you allowed as a Muslim to break your promise, to break that agreement because the circumstances favor you? Have you understood the question? The circumstances favor you, yes. There's an opportunity, there's a chance you have seen that was not there. And if you don't take this chance, perhaps it might not appear again. True, but you don't know the future. But you cannot seek out glory with the, dis with the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. If your foundation is built upon disobedience, it's a foundation that will not last. So the Muslims initial mistake was breaking the agreement that they had with Byzantine to attack Sicily based on the information of Euphemius that could have been true or false. They did not confirm that news. And if it was true, as a Muslim, if you see that the other side are the ones who have broken the agreement, inform them. You guys have broken your agreement. We are not the ones who broke it. Take notice that we have no agreement. Henceforth, we go back to war. Have you understood the effect of that? You cannot just all of a sudden, we have an agreement. People are sleeping in the house. Yes, non-Muslims. Yes, the greatest enemies of Islam. But you have an agreement. That agreement should hold you. You can't just come and start attack people in the morning or at uh, that. It's not allowed Islamically. So, the Muslims took 75 good years to conquer Sicily. And this was at the time of the Aghaliba. The ruling dynasty at the time in Tunisia was known as the Aghaliba. Then, a disaster happened in North Africa. What is the disaster that happened in North Africa? The new empire appeared. A new empire of Shias, or extreme Shias appeared, and they destroyed all that that was built by the Muslims in North Africa. This is the Shia empire of the Ismailis, or the Aga Khans, or the Dawla al fatimiyah or the Dawla al ubaidiyah These are the people who destroyed North Africa and led to our eventual loss of Sicily. This is what we shall look at at our forthcoming lecture. Hopefully tomorrow. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.